What is up ladies and gents, Noel here and welcome to another Payday 2 video. Today, just before the start of a new year and the end of a Steam sale, we're going to take a look at Payday 2's best pieces of paid content. Payday has in total over 40 paid DLCs as of right now and if you pick these up at full price, your wallet is definitely still stinging. However, over the years, sales have passed us by, special editions have been made available, then unavailable again, and generally most of the gated Payday 2 content has been obtainable at an affordable price. I think it's been long enough now that most fanatics have picked up all they need Payday related, however what about you new players picking up the game for under a dollar? It kind of burns paying three times as much for additional content tagged in the memes category as it does for the game itself. Therefore, before the sale is through, I want to guide you through some of the more essential DLCs if you want to maximize your fun and time with the game, as well as the capacity to beat the hardest heist on the hardest difficulties. Before I get into the first DLC, note that these are not necessarily in any particular order, and just to mention one great thing about DLC heists, ownership is not required to play them with others, so if a friend has them, you don't need to pick them up. So whilst it feels good to own and be able to solo them, it's difficult to recommend them as essential. Therefore, I'll limit it to just one heist DLC on this list. So let's start things off with a slightly boring but simply essential one, which I originally underrated. The Gage Mod Courier Pack, released on the 10th of April 2014, is one of the earlier DLCs on this list, but don't let that put you off. Because I inadvertently farmed a ludicrous amount of attachments for the sake of my Mask of the Day series, I never truly suffered from what is a horrendously flawed attachment reward system. However, back in the day, this was a nightmare, resulting in some of the vanilla game guns being sorely underused just because people couldn't get their hands on the right setups. With the release of these courier packs into the game, suddenly we received the best attachments with certainty. This DLC has the potential to make every gun you use stronger and avoid any tedious grind. The 28 attachments added here are still, 5 years on, some of the best in the game, and have seen metas formed around them. Notably, the compensators have always found a spot in my arsenal, and the AK and car have been relevant ever since. The way in which this DLC works it adds 5 varieties of package scattered across every map, which are found in fixed but generated locations on each heist. By searching for and picking up enough of these gauge mod packs, you will automatically unlock brilliant weapon modifications. This ranges from 5 green mantises to 25 purple snakes, granting you ever popular attachments such as the flash hider for pistols and the quad stat mags. For those of you who don't enjoy using iron sights, you will also receive 10 new color customizable reticles in this DLC. Also, we have 10 new attachments ranging from pimping out your gun to completing the collection minigames. My only complaint here is that this isn't standard for all owners of Payday 2 at this point. Virtually essential. To me, it's hard to recommend specific character packs to people as everyone has their own favourite heister. I tend to play as Hopston because I like his lines, I like the way he was reintroduced to the game and Pete Gold himself is brilliant. However, even when I'm playing my man, I seldom use his perk deck. In fact, the last two big build videos I made, including my quote-unquote best build right now, uses Anarchist, the perk deck unlocked in the Sydney character pack, and that's why this is the one I recommend. The punk styled Aussie has always been very popular, the voice actress and provider of her likeness, Claudia van Kuhlenberg, attending the old payday cons and generally being quite active in the community. But if that isn't reason enough for you to pick up this DLC, let me try and convince you. As I mentioned, Anarchist is amazing. An adrenaline style setup which requires you to keep shooting and dealing damage to regain armor, lifesteal or armor steel in this case, is always fun. Furthermore, sporadic health damage immunity allows you to make some truly outrageous plays and clutch inspires. It's an exciting playstyle as well as being one of the absolute best in the game. That isn't all we get here though, the character pack also comes with Sydney's signature weapon, the bootleg assault rifle, which with a few adjustments is now pretty viable, with assault rifle stats and an LMG feel, it is certainly unique to play around with. Her melee weapon is the awesome looking butterfly knife, so fans of TF2 Spy will also get some additional enjoyment. As with all character packs, it will also unlock access to Sydney's mask, definitely the one I would recommend if you could only pick one, but character packs are always a safe bet if you want a decent amount of new content, especially with new skills to play around with. As for the heist DLC, I'd love to be able to recommend the Border Crossing heist. This is the most recent piece of paid content following the revival of Payday 2's development process, and to me was an excellent mission both in loud and stealth with a unique setting and cook-off variant. 
However, the higher current price point and the over-reliance on old assets mar the generally fun design on objectives, making it hard to make a full recommendation here. Instead, let me point you towards the Point Break heists. Yes, it was another movie promotion, but it was one that Overkill was clearly excited for and fully committed to. This comes across in its execution. The two heists are some of the most unique and cinematic in Payday 2 to this day, heavily inspired by the source material without losing that Payday feel. It also introduced Locke, one of the more popular non-playable characters added to Payday 2. The weapons given out in heist DLCs have often felt a little tacked on, but the Baby Deagle was pretty monstrous on release, combining heavy stopping power with great handling statistics. I've always thought the Point Break masks and com cosmetics were some of the best we were given outside of the base game, and the Ice Pick was not a bad melee weapon at all. Ten new achievements are bundled in as you would expect, and finally you'll be getting six new musical tracks, including movie licensed ones, adding more value to the package. I'd also like to be able to recommend the Hotline Miami DLC, but as I said, I am limiting myself. I love it, and I know fans of the series shouldn't miss out, but do keep in mind you need the Hotline Miami 2 game on Steam to unlock everything related to it, making it a hard recommendation to make for everybody. Before I round this video off, let's look through some quick honorable mentions. The Gage Sniper Pack, for example, was back in the day essential. However, now free weapons have outclassed all but the Thanatos 50 Cal, so its main use is tank busting, one to consider. Similarly, the Wolf Pack contained two classic heists, plus the once amazing China Puff Grenade Launcher, all for a pretty low price considering it was a heist pack. Sadly, these were just brought back from Payday the Heist, so it's nothing new if you played that game, and the China Puff is a shadow of its former self. It would also be remiss of me to not mention the Butcher's AK and Car Mod packs, as well as the Gage Spec Ops pack, but don't want to get overly repetitive in just focusing on mod packs, as I'm guessing you guys would prefer variety. Whilst both of these DLCs left some of the older mod courier attachments in the dirt, and the Spec Ops pack made the Isma and JP36 viable and interesting, as well as adding the awesome Arbiter grenade launcher, I'd still rather focus on DLCs which improved more than just a few weapon types and had a more lasting impact on the meta overall. Still suggested buys if you guys have some spare change. Next up, I have to mention the Clover character pack. Burglar was the only stealth perk deck before Joy was added for free. She is definitely one of the most popular characters with her Irish lilt and the witty pager comments. To me though, I worry I have a natural bias as I believe her release and that of the diamond was really the heyday of Payday 2. So with Joy adding a free stealth option, the Clover pack is just not as valuable as it once was. Finally for honourable mentions, the Sokol character pack. Now, this DLC may as well have been called the Grinder perk deck when it came out. For a few weeks, this took the challenge right out of Payday 2 as everyone was out sustaining even the most powerful of cops. Even after being nerfed to the ground, it still trivializes any difficulty below Mayhem, and the Valkyria rifle is pretty strong and great for concealment setups, so it may be worth picking up cheaply, even if Sokol isn't your boy. So to cap this all off, I had to put in a couple of weapon packs, so you guys would have more than the base weapons to mess around with. Weapon packs always were my favourite DLCs, because I love going loud and no matter what heist I was on, I always felt I was getting my money's worth. I do really like the Gage Russian weapon pack, which was essentially three straight up upgrade weapons in the Sniper, AR and SMG category. However, while it fits the value for money bill, it doesn't have the same fun factor as the two I'm going to spotlight here. For me, in terms of quality, it has to be a tie between the Butcher's Barbecue pack for the potential chaos, or the Gage Shotgun pack for that utility on harder difficulties. My old favourite build relied on the Dragon's Breath rounds, which when used alongside the Brothers Grimm shotguns could be fairly devastating, and my new favourite build is reliant on the explosive round Judge Shotgun to clear out shields, interrupt tasers, and break Dozer's armour. So depending on your style, take your pick, or get both. The barbecue pack is as you can imagine all about setting things on fire, it has weapons that synergize really well with the grinder and anarchist perk decks, molotovs are great throwables, the stakeout 12g is one of the more, more viable and satisfying shotguns, and the flamethrower is absolutely slept on and features in some of my favourite for fun builds. Even the weaker elements like the piglet grenade launcher and the incendiary grenade ammo, alongside some average melee weapons are fun to mess around with. The cosmetics are what you make of them, but I think they are some of the better DLC ones on offer. Four new achievements, and there you have it. Not a bad deal at all. Next, and as I said parallel to the barbecue pack, is the shotgun pack. One of Gage's earlier offerings, these weapons are still not bad today, with the raven shotgun in particular seeing use in many stealth builds. 
The M1014 and Street Sweeper are not at the apex of the meta, but have the added bonus of being shotguns, so are fun even when underwhelming. Melee weapon wise, this is not a great selection and I personally don't love the 8 mass, but those features are hardly what you're picking up this DLC for. No, what we really want are the special ammunitions, particularly high explosive rounds. Explosions are always fun, now they are also hugely helpful for dealing with groups of cops and special enemies, as well as taking out snipers believe it or not. The buckshot rounds bring more damage to the table and flechette is all about maximising accuracy but let's be honest, I'm recommending you spend your money pretty much entirely on the promise of sending cops flying. Couple that with 12 new achievements to go for and I'd say you've got your money's worth, especially when equipping your special ammo on free weapons such as the Judge or later added Akimbo Goliaths for more chaos than Overkill had originally planned. And that does it for this DLC video. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more Payday 2 lists and taking a look maybe at potentially the worst DLCs it has on offer. As for this one, I often see complaints about just how laden Payday 2 is with additional paid content. But if you sift through carefully, sorting the wheat from the chaff, you can easily and quite cheaply at this time of the year end up with a streamlined and affordable gameplay experience. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, had a great Christmas and enjoy the end of your 2019. This is my last video of the year and of the decade, but I hope you will join me in the next one as we see where Payday's future lies.